For every six years, the IPCC puts out a report that summarizes the state of climate science and summarizes the progress that we've seen in, in changes with respect to doing something about what's happening with climate change. Um, so, so the report represents an increase in scientific certainty. There has been a significant scientific effort on climate change, understanding the mechanisms of climate change, understanding the implications of climate change, um, and understanding what we're doing about it. So it's, it's a bit of a, a stock-taking exercise for the world to figure out, you know, are we doing something that's really constructively making a change in the status quo or, or the trajectory that, that we, we've been on? Um, and, and just how, how how important do we think climate change is likely to be to the human enterprise in, in the, the coming years? Um, and what the, this report does is, again, we, we have an increase in certainty over the impacts. You know, there, there have been another six or seven years worth of research that are summarized in this report. And what we see is, is a, as we would expect in any scientific enterprise that has a, a lot of effort focused on it, we see an increase in, in, in sophistication of our knowledge, an increase in, in um, the certainty of our knowledge. Um, and, and I think that's really important for governments to, to, to focus on. Um, and we also see greater alarm bells being rung by the scientific community saying, you know, we, we, we thought that, that this was, you know, pretty likely that, that, that humans were doing it. Now, you know, we're 95 percent certain that this, this climate change that we're experiencing is not natural background or it's, it's not something that, that's natural variation within the climate system, that we are actually having a human impact on the, the climate system. And the concern for that is that the human impact on the climate system is not always pushing the, the climate system to a place where we would actually like to see it go for the world. So, so it, it is likely to have impacts on, on coastal, um, coastal cities, for example, on, on coastlines in general. It's likely to have an impact on places where, where a lot of people live. Um, it's likely to have an impact on development aspirations of, of countries that are, that are emerging economies, uh, developing countries. It's likely to have um, impacts through, through um, climate catastrophes on the insurance industry, for example. So, so it, what, what we're seeing coming out of this is an increased certainty. I don't think there are any major surprises in, in what's happening. There are a few new things with respect to how the, the uncertainty has been decreased and, and the way that, that um, the scientists have communicated the, the, the impacts. Um, for example, they've now quantified um, how much emissions are allowable if we want to stay within the, the, the two degree C target. And they've shown that, that we've probably emitted about half of the carbon dioxide that we could emit um, in order to, 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 uh, to stay within that target, which is alarming because emissions are increasing at, at exponential rates. They're not increasing at, at arithmetic rates, it, it's exponential. And that means that, that we're accelerating the rate at which emissions are happening. And that, that's not the direction that the world needs to be going if we're actually going to, to limit climate change and the damages associated with climate change to this two degree C uh, target. So what's important in this report for forestry stakeholders is twofold. First of all, forests are contributing to emissions. And so emissions reductions from deforestation and forest degradation are an important part of the, the solution. Um, but secondly, I think there's uh, uh, the element of vulnerability of forests and, for, and, and ecosystems in general to changing climates um, is, is a real message that, that we need to, to, to take into account. You know, many people around the world depend upon forests for their livelihoods. You know, many people who are living at subsistence livelihoods are depending upon forests for, for, for that livelihood. Um, in, in, in developed countries, we depend an awful lot on forests for, for fi you know, we have wood needs, fiber needs, paper. Um, we, we, we use forest products all the time. Um, and these f products are likely to become more expensive over time because of some of the, the, uh, the changes that are happening in forests. Tropical forests are a major source of, of, of fiber um, to, to uh, developed economies. Um, and so, so these things are going to become uh, perhaps more, more threatened because of, of climate disruption. You know, stakeholders need to understand that it's, it's going to be more costly to produce uh, uh, the fiber products, the wood products that, that we're, we are currently producing from, from, um, uh, from forests. Um, forests are also a major source of wood fuel in many parts of the world. And as forests become more vulnerable to, to climate change, as ecosystems begin to change in response to climate change, the, ability, the continued ability of, of these uh, ecosystems to, pr to provide uh, these types of products is going to be, uh, be questionable as well. So, so there's a, a whole host of messages for forest stakeholders, for forest users, and for, for, um, for people who are interested in climate change mitigation about uh, the, importance of, the continued importance of forests and ecosystems uh, worldwide in responding to the, the challenges that climate change is, is going to throw our way in, in the coming years.